Talk for a few minutes from this subject, my bright, beautiful, and strong daughter. Amen. I made it personal, and uh, uh, but it 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 is for all daughters. The goal is for all of our daughters to be bright. To be beautiful and to be strong. God wants you wise, lovely, and strong. Amen. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we talk for a few minutes, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, to speak on this subject about my daughter, um, is indeed a, a, a delight for me. Um, and you can tell just by her presentation that she has far exceeded all of my loftiest expectations of her. I knew that when she was born, someone special had come into the world, but I didn't know just how special. Crystal is a, is a gift, amen, and I, I praise the Lord for her. And in our text, David prays that our daughters may become like pleasant mating or pleasing maidens, a pleasing maiden. The maiden, listen to this, parents, is the young unmarried girl, single young lady, the actual definition to maiden. She's young, she's unmarried, she's single. One writer said, a virgin, a young unmarried woman. The goal is for this young unmarried woman to be shaped into being an agreeable, pleasant, enjoyable, intelligent young lady. Hence, to become like pleasing maidens. Pleasing like the richly decorated pillars adorning the Near East palaces. Our goal is uh, should be for our women, and we have to start with them being young. Um, we want them to be strong and confident. Um, th there's, a, there's a tragic story in the Bible about um, a young lady by the name of uh, Tamar. Tamar's uh, story is sad for multiple reasons. Um, Tamar was assaulted. Amen. Tamar is a young lady who had a terrible hand dealt to her. Um, I was listening at my daughter and I was so honored uh, about the, the things that she said about me. I, it just blessed me as a dad to hear that, and, um, uh, and, I, and I thought uh, if, if I had those, that effect, uh, that influence in her life, she's blessed, um, and I praise the Lord for that, and then I thought about the multitude of young ladies whose fathers were not that. Um, uh, I never really knew my father, so everybody has to deal with hands that is dealt to them. See, um, life is what it is. And you have to, you have to, you can't, you can't say, well, 
if so-and-so had a great mom or they had a great dad, then that's why they're the way they are. But since I didn't have that, then I'm justified by not being who and what I can be. No, uh, if she and I are testimonies that if you put your hands in the Lord's hand, God can do something with you. She had a present father. What made her dad want to be present was I grew up with mine being absent. I didn't know him. And uh, uh, it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. If you didn't grow up, if you, if you grew up in a home, your father was there, you can't relate to this part. See, because you don't have a covering. And you got to, you got to, you don't have anybody to give you your identity. See, the, va the validation comes from fathers. Now, my mother, God bless her heart, she was a smart woman. My mother never told me bad things about my dad. Amen. I didn't think I'd get many amens when I said that. Because a lot of people whose fathers wasn't there, uh, they, they, they let, the girl, let the child know every day your daddy ain't no good, no good dirty dog. Every mistake he made, she made sure the children knew it. Now, in her quest for vengeance, she didn't know that she was destroying those children. Because, see, if dad is no good, if he, he may be no good. But if, he, but if you convince me that he's no good, you've also convinced me that I, I got to be half no good. See, there's got to be no good in me because I come from him. Amen. So she did not put Tommy James, Thomas James Wooden Sr., a.k.a. T-Man on blast. I didn't learn of what a ferocious gangster he was until I got grown. And my siblings up north told me uh, about the kind of man that my father was. And he wasn't a churchman. Uh, it did help me understand myself a little better with some thoughts that had circulated in my mind. I understand where I got that from, wanting to, you know, get, get angry and then you want to, you know, want to kill somebody. So, okay, that's where that came from. All right, so thank God. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. They said he had a wicked right hook. And uh, when he would get angry, the, the veins would pulsate and, oh, it's just, and, and I, I and I and and I almost lost his hand when I was working in the factory. And and the Lord, the anointing that God gives me. Most, I'm right-handed, but most time I pray using my right hand because that's the way the Lord directed me to do it. And turns out that just as my father used his right hand, God had me, but on his side, using my right hand. He cast the devil out, and I did too. <laughs> But we, <laughs> you know, the methods were different, but, amen, both men were delivered. <laughs> See, you got, you got up, <laughs> both of them got off the floor determined not to do that anymore. <laughs> amen. But my mama, to, to make the point, she never put my daddy down. I love Mama for that. Um, and it made me want to, when I married and had children, I didn't want them to feel the insecurities. Amen. Um, Tamar was assaulted. She was assaulted by her half-brother. 
Um, I guess now to sound smart, you say the family was dysfunctional. Uh, back in the day, we just said the family was messed up. It was a messed up family. The devil, the devil was in there. And um, her brother pretended to be sick and got her to come and to help him, to a sister tending for her brother. And he raped her. And then after raping her, he wickedly discarded her. What happened to her was not fair. It was not right. Um, but the thing that damaged her more than anything else, we're talking about family, right? Family night, daddy, daughter, is how her dad handled it. I think that Tamar could have recovered. Men, had her dad handled it. It's because a father is not a God. He can't keep everything from him. You can't keep everything out. Trouble can walk in with you in the house. Amen. Just because something goes south in a family, that doesn't imply that the parents were negligent. Praise the Lord. Look at our heavenly father. Look at, look at how holy he is. He never sleeps and he never slumbers. And look at how messed up this world is. Well, you can't blame him. That free will is something, ain't it? See, and some of you parents need to deliver yourself because your, your children at 40 will try to blame you for something that happened oh, 30 years ago. And there you are. 30 years later saying, I'm sorry. At a certain point, you have to tell them, you got to get over that. <laughs> well, 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 Ma, I, I saw you drinking that time. All right. Have you seen me drinking since then? Oh, Dad, I, uh, you wasn't there. Okay. Well, at, at, at a certain point, you have, you have to get past that. But parents have to handle things right when things happen. And something happened to Tamar that should not have happened. What her brother did was horrible. It was horrendous. And um, I can't understand it. All the women in the kingdom. He is a part of the royal family. David's son can have any woman in the palace he wants. He goes for his sister. I mean, if you're a regular person, if the only person, woman left on earth is your sister, then there's still nobody left on earth for you. There's, there's nobody. Because that's your flesh and blood. I said if you're a regular person. Now, there are, there's, there's such thing as the spirit of incest. And there are many incest victims in the house of God. And if you've been victimized that way, that is not your fault. That's not on you. Amen. That's not on you. Uh, and I don't have no kind words. I don't have kind words. I don't have kind words for um, um, a parent that would rape that child. All I can, I, all I can do is uh, plead the blood and, amen. Uh, let me move on. Um, I, I don't know, I don't. Some things, the Lord hadn't hardly equipped you, uh, well, I, me, uh, to, to deal with. See, because I, I can't see that. That's Crystal is my daughter. That's, that's, I look at her. I love her. Oh, I have, I have such an admiration for her. I think she's, she's beautiful. I think she's precious. But that's, that's, that's an extension of me. 
And, and I've loved her as a father in a manner to where when they come over, when I'm with my granddaughter, she don't keep coming to check to make sure everything's all right because she know her baby is in good hands. You can tell when it's been right. There's trust there. There can be no trust. Daddy tried to mess with you. You know you ain't going to leave your children with him. Because he's already demonstrated that he does not have, that he has inordinate affection. You ain't supposed to have if affection. You're not supposed to have to be able to think sexually about your own. This is good family talk. Good, good family Good family, it's order. It's order. It's order. Some things, some if, if certain thought come to your mind, you ought to just laugh and say, I know that's the devil. Earth is the home of eight plus plus billion people. Five billion or more of them are women. All them women. And you're gonna mess with your your child, your own. Something wrong with that. Uh, Abnon could have had any woman in the kingdom that he wanted. His daddy was king. David's son. <laughs> and you know, we, we know what kind of man your daddy was. And, Could have had any woman you want. And what you do is you, you, you molest your sister. And if you read the story, she put up a fight. She said to him, do not so wickedly. There is no moral equivalence in the story. You can't say, well, you know, if she would have done. No, 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 mm -mm. no, 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 no. And you know what? They tried to do that with uh, this guy, the same. R. Kelly. You can't defend that. There's no two sides to serial behavior like that. Now, somebody might have lied, but everybody ain't lying. Amen. And it doesn't matter how good you can sing, how good you can dance, and all that kind of stuff. That predatory behavior like that cannot be defended. Mm -mm. You color yourself in the wrong, uh, uh, you put yourself in the bad place. Trying to defend. Let me give you one of my rules. Never defend the indefensible. You hurt yourself doing that. And you put yourself in a position where you may not even recover. People never see you the same way. The man's a devil. Amen. And uh, that's, that's predatory behavior. Uh, so so he, he does this to her. But the one thing that really... Uh, I feel broke her was how her daddy responded. Second Samuel chapter 13 verse 20 says, And Absalom her brother said unto her, Hath Abnon thy brother been with thee? Uh, it says, But hold now thy peace, my sister, he is thy brother. Regard not this thing. All right? He says to her, he was trying to tell her, don't blame yourself. He says, don't let this just permeate and simmer in your heart. He warns her, you got to fight this. This is bad. When he says regard not, he wasn't saying wasn't well, saying just don't think about it. But the point of it is, the truth is, no, none of us have had storybook lives. So everybody has had something. You may not have had a brother like Amnon, but you've had something to happen to you. And you can't let that thing keep you from being the woman of God, the daughter of God, that the Lord would have you to be. You got to begin to Fight right away. It's like 
uh, uh, in a, swimming in a pool and you almost drown. They get you out of the pool. Now, at that point, you got to make a decision. Whether you will never swim again or jump out there, jump right back out there in that water. Go out there and face your fears so you can overcome it. Sometimes people let things grab them and let it latch on and they allow it to ruin them for the rest of their lives. You can't make a good husband. Can't make a good wife. You can't shake what happened to you. Can't get past it. And you allow the enemy to victimize you over and over and over again. And I want to say to every person in here, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Don't you do it. No matter how horrendous it may or may not have been, don't let him or her or them or mom or dad or sister or brother hold you hostage for the rest of your days. Don't you do that. Because you have something to offer. God's not through with you. You're alive, aren't you? You're here. He's deposited in you. He loves you. He's filled you with his spirit. He's given you a new chance. You can't throw that away. Bible says that, that he says, regard not this thing. So Tamar, look at this. So Tamar remained, look at this, desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Now, now, what is sad is, what's sad uh, is that uh, you don't hear from her anymore. That's sad. There is no, there is no Job chapter 42 verse 12 with her. You don't hear from her anymore. But I think what sealed it was verse 21. But when King David heard of all these things. He was very wroth. That's something, isn't it? But brother, Elder Brody, it ended right there. He got mad. He got upset. He hit the ceiling. He didn't hit Amnon. He didn't avenge his daughter. You don't read where he found her and held her. No, sir. My God. You don't read where there was any attempt. Right. Oh, maybe, maybe I, I got feel I got Bible readers in here. Maybe I haven't read it. No, sir. Miller, you know, you know the word. Did, have you read it? Did, he didn't do it. It he he basically got upset and let it go. And in letting it go, he let her go. He lost her and Absalom and Abnon because Absalom killed Abnon. And Absalom rebelled against David. All this going on in the royal family. Can I get a witness? Point the reason I'm showing you this is I want I want to say to you, you can't you can't let life define you. You can't hear the presentation and say, Well, um, I think if I just would have had a, a father like that, I could have done better. That's truth to that. You probably could have. But that doesn't mean that you still can't. See, the Church of God in Christ is a pedigree church. Most of your bishops, fathers were bishops. Grandfathers were bishops. Uncles were bishops. Most of the people who move up in the church come from a, a pedigree, a family of people who held positions. My, I don't have any of that. But God. But God. See, 
When the Lord is on your side, God fixes things. The Lord does things that no one else can do. And, and, and no one can get the credit for it but the Lord. Dads, it is our responsibility to raise bright, beautiful, and strong daughters. That our daughters may be as cornerstones. That's where I get strong from. Uh, the cornerstones, these are load-bearing beams. Um, I, I've talked about this before. I helped design this building. One of the unique things about this building is that in this sanctuary, you, you go into very few places where the, uh, there's an open space this large and there are no pillars. There are no pillars that obstruct view. Most places, there's a big pillar here, one here, you know. Here, by design. Those, that pillar right there, and those pillars that, that you see there, those are all, none of those things are there for decoration. Right. We made them look good, but th those are load-bearing beams. Yeah. If any of those beams would snap, the whole thing would collapse. They, they all meet. And they're, 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 behind, they're, they're, they're those that are behind me too. You just can't see them. They meet way down in the ground wow. underneath this church. About 20, 30 feet or so down. And they're all, they all have the exact amount of, of tension on them. Huge steel cables. And they, they come together and they hold this building in place. Glory to God. You don't even notice them. They don't block anybody's view. They don't get in anyone's way. And yet they protect us all. Hallelujah. This building is built. Uh, it's called Exposure C. It's built to withstand up to 120, 125 mile an hour winds. Wow. Uh, Father, thank you for not sending that kind of wind. But we, because you know, there's, there's no building that you can build that God can't blow down. But, but th this was not flimsily thrown together. It's built to last. All right? But we had to find a way to deliver this open space so that every seat would be a good seat. And uh, notice the design. Everything in the church, when we design it, this church talks to you before the preacher even gets to the mic. Because everything, the focal point of this church is the podium. The altar. It tells you this place was made for preaching. Everything. Everything comes right here. And the preacher is to preach to you. And so we got these beams. I'm talking about daughters. We got these beams. They do their job. We... Painted them the way that we painted them. They're not too overly decorated. You can tell this is a man's church. I mean, I, that, the pastor, you know, I, uh, we had to, had to get some flowers in here, kind of soften it up a little bit, you know. <laughs> I mean, the la ladies add a touch that men don't have. That's right. Amen. So these beautiful flowers. It you know, kind of you know, spruce it up a little bit. It was just us, you know, just 
<laughs> just wanted to, you know, function. And the men had a gathering not long ago. We were in the fellowship hall. All we wanted was tables. And when the ladies have that, they have nice tablecloths, decor decorations on the table. Everything is just so nice. Guys come together, just give me a table. Table and a chair, give me a drink, a little, you know, a little uh, uh, a Pepsi or whatever, and we're going we're gonna to have a nice little meeting, and we're, and we're just as happy as can be. But now, these beams, when, they, when you look at the way they fit with the rest of the decorum, they're beautiful. They don't clash. They're not ugly. Amen. That's a daughter. That's what David said we wanted. We want to raise them where they're strong. Praise the Lord. But beautiful. And an intelligent design. Because in life, you're going to need some sense. You're going to have to be able to think your way through life. Praise the Lord. You're not going to get anywhere not thinking. You're not going to get anywhere letting everybody do the thinking for you. And parents, we raise them. We raise them to think, uh, to use their minds. Uh, and my approach was I want them to be able to think because if things go according to the normal plan, they're going to be here when we're gone. Amen. So the, the day will come when you can't ask me anything. That's right. Praise the Lord. Because in biblical Christianity, we don't pray to the dead. You know, I was going through the other day, and I heard my, I heard my mama talking to me. You, you may have heard something, but she wasn't talking to you. I mean, you may have heard something that she said in times past, but the, look, the, there's a golf. They, they, they don't come back. Amen. So you got, to, you got to deposit all you can, while you can, and we got to learn. And you can't raise them to be fragile. See, now that's one thing about a helicopter parent. You make your children too soft. Because every little thing, everything go wrong, you jumping into it. Every battle, you're in it. Now, she's 20, and he's 20, and you're 50. Stay out of it. Unless it gets violent or something like that, then you got to go and do what you, you know, what parents do. But kind of let them work their way through a thing. Uh, and you got, you got to know why they're coming up, that, that, that their little heart is going to get broken. Sooner or later, her boyfriend's going to quit her. Sooner or later, his girlfriend's going to quit him. Everybody go, have certain things everybody's got to go through. There is a, there is much to be learned through failure. Amen. I was sharing with someone the other day, some of the biggest highlights of my ministerial career, all oh, some of the greatest things that ever happened to me came to me in the form of the God of the Bible telling me, no. I've had more no's than yeses, but the no's, when I look back on them, they were always on time. The waits, the not now, not ready yet. When I knew I was, found out that I wasn't. Because then when it finally came around, then I looked back and said, had it happened when I wanted it to, it would have messed me up. God knows. See, your, your character and your strength is not built. Uh, our daughters and sons aren't made strong by us rescuing them. You got to let them pull themselves up. I was sitting in the chair the other day. I was taken by John Jr.'s strength. I said I had my legs crossed. He walked up to me and jumped up, grabbed my leg, pulled. I could feel his strength. He pulled himself up, threw his leg up over my leg, climbed up in my lap, and then sat there. And I just looked at him. And he, but see, he had to learn to pull himself up. Fall, bump your head, get up, get up, pull up, come on. Because I wanted to be strong. And she is strong. I wanted her. Uh, Dad, I, I told my daughter, and I'm almost finished. I said, listen, 
I didn't come to hoop it up tonight, saints. Uh, I told her when she was into sports, I said, look, don't, don't scratch up your leg. That's right. What you doing all that sliding in the home base, scarring up your leg? Oh, daddy. No, 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 no. Don't you, scratch, don't, don't you scratch your leg. If you scratch your legs again, I'm going to whoop you. And don't you mess up your feet. Let me see them. Keep them nice now. Daddy, daddy, you just. Look, your husband is going to thank me someday. Man, all out there sliding in. Right. Man, that's the, no, no, no. You tell them early. You tell, talk to her. Talk to her. I'm just so proud of it. Look at her. She slid into third base. Did she get paid? <laughs> if there ain't, no, ain't no multi-million dollar contract tied to that, tell her to stop that. Mm -mm, that'll, that'll work against her in the long run. Make sure the shoes are big enough. Make sure the shoes fit so her feet won't get misshapen. Oh, I'm, I'm talking. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm telling you things. I'm, you know, they, they told me it was, they told me it's daddy, daddy, daughter, things that, that I did. You want to you, you make sure of that. Listen, listen, parents. Listen, you can cut corners on a lot of things when you're buying your children's clothing, but don't cut corners on shoes. Get the best ones. Get the best ones. Get the best. No, I don't care what anybody tell you. You get the best shoes because their little feet are forming. And don't go to the bargain. What's them shoes? Uh, the, the, what's the name of them? Stride. Sketches. No, I'm talking, I'm talking about babies, little children. Now I wish I, I wish I could get that kind of amen when I'm preaching. <laughs> stride right. Stride, stride, stride right. Uh, 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 tennis shoe. Get, get, I guess that's the right way. But you got, you got to do that because their little feet got to develop. And you got to talk to her, tell her who she is, amen. And and and, uh, and 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 fathers, I'm talking to the fathers for a few minutes. You know, make them dress age appropriate. That will go a long way. That go along because there's a lot of predators out there, and you don't want her at 15 dressing in a manner where she's attracting guys 25. See, because she's 15, I don't care what she looked like, she's 15. And what is 15? Young, dumb, and full of fun. 15, 11, 15. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know the game. Don't know how cruel people can be. Don't know how, oh, how a man can just lie. I mean, you know, lie. Oh, we woo, will say anything. Oh, oh, God. Can I get a witness? Anything. And then some, some of us were scared that we were going to reap what we sow. <laughs> Back in the day, oh, God, I got a daughter. Lord, forgive me for everything. I repented again. Lord, I'm just so sorry. Come into my life, Lord. Save me, Jesus, over and over and over. A amen. Touch me, Lord. Make a way. Fix it. Fix it, Jesus. And so you want to tell them. You want to tell them because they're, they, otherwise they're sitting ducks. And you're the father. The father, you need to tell him. I remember one day, Crystal was coming downstairs. Oh, she was dressed up. And I looked at her. And I said, Crystal, sweetheart, baby. <laughs> where do you think you're going? Because I knew where she was going. She was going back upstairs to change clothes. I just wanted to know, where do you think you're going, baby? Ah, oh, daddy, we get, no, 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 that's not where you're going. You're going upstairs. You're going to change clothes because you can't go out looking like that, baby. And I, and I, I said, Chris, let me tell you something. I looked up. I said, the Lord has blessed you. You blessed. I mean, the curves coming in and all that. The Lord has blessed you. Amen. You, you're a sister. You're a black girl. you growing in a place where brothers like for our women to grow. Now, you don't need to be out there, you know, praise the Lord. Now, I ain't going to get no, I ain't gonna get no more specific than that. If you can't figure that out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to anoint you with uh, <laughs> pineapple juice. And so I said, no, no, you, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm cause, oh, cause the predators, oh, there they are. And if you love them, right, and, 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 
and you're there, they'll listen to you. And they can trust what you tell them. Trust their daddy, can trust what you tell them. So uh, I, wanted, I wanted her to be strong, and, 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 um, uh, but I didn't want her to be bitter. Ladies, everybody who's being nice to you isn't trying to hit on you. And you got to have the discernment as to know the difference. Um, you won't get anywhere, you won't get through life being unpleasant and being um, um, mean and unenjoyable. Um, some of you, uh, you be, you, you, um, you're going to run your husband off because you're too mean. What you looking at me like that for? Well, I mean, you're a girl. God, look at girls. You're a girl. He's going to look at you. He's going to act like he got some sense. Stay where he needs to stay, but he's going to look at you. You want him to look at you. Because right. if none of them are looking at you, then, then every time a man turns around, there you go standing in front of him because you want somebody to look at you. Know how to receive things. Matthew Henry said this. He says, by daughters, families are united and connected to their mutual strengths as the parts of a building are by the cornerstones. And when they are graceful and beautiful, both in body and mind, they are then polished after the similitude of a nice structure. When we see our daughters well established and stayed with wisdom and direction, we, when we see them by faith united to Christ, when we see them purified and consecrated to God as living temples, we think ourselves Happy in them. End of quote. I agree with Matthew Henry 100%. He says, I have here a few quotes, uh, some by some authors and some unknown authors. He says, uh, a daughter may outgrow your lap, but she will never outgrow your heart. He says, my daughter... You've blessed my life greatly. I'm so glad we're friends. The time we have together is the best that I spend, an unknown author. When I read this particular uh, poem, I, it blessed me because I respect my daughter. She is my daughter, but I cherish our friendship. Amen. See, she's grown now. You you know, once a person is grown, you, you can't treat a grown person like their child. So uh, the relationship is, uh, is, is, is a friendship. I enjoy calling her and getting her thoughts on things. And we don't always agree. I, I threw something out. We were all riding to Charlotte. John was driving, and I asked a question. Uh, me and my wife, John and his wife, Crystal, we were together. And I told them about a discussion that Pam and I had that I started over the lyrics of a particular song. And I gave my thought on it. And my wife's position was not my position. Her position was a little different from mine. And so when I was talking to Pam about it in Baltimore, I said, I I'm going to run this by Crystal Shoe. She'll probably think, see it the way uh, I see it, which will give me the confirmation that I'm probably right. And so we uh, were riding along, and I threw mine out there. And since I initiated it, I, you know how people do? They try to close all the doors in the discussion, you know. <laughs> While you're laying it out, you, tr you try to incorporate your opponent's position and close those doors too. And uh, 
And so I, I laid it out there. And then it was time for the rebuttal, which Pam is as she's a worthy opponent. So she said, well, she began to lay out her side of it. And uh, I said, you know, I was, I'm riding along. I said, you know, I said, I'm, I'm I'm, I might be losing ground on this one. I, I mean, I, I even said I could be wrong. I usually don't say that. <laughs> so I said, I, said, I, I might, I might, I'm, I said, we both might be right. <laughs> I'm trying to hedge, hedge my bet. Elder Amanchuku, being the ever pragmatist, said, well, get the lyrics to the song. <laughs> he wants to pull the lyrics up. Well, I'm telling him what the song says. It's, it's a Christian song. So Crystal then weighs in. And I listen because Crystal is my friend. <laughs> Crystal is my gift. And I know, I know, I know Crystal always agreed with her daddy. Crystal. <laughs> You know, Dad, I, th I think I see it the way Mama sees it. <laughs> and you know what? I loved her for her honesty. And I thought to myself, that's what I like about her. We have a relationship where she understands that if she disagrees, it's not threatened. It, it's, not, it's not based upon, you got to always say what I say. Amen. I, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't, but you don't have to always say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Y'all follow me, right? Amen. Amen. But uh, it blessed me. It blessed me real good. And you know what I did after she gave her ruling? I just left it alone. I'm not going to tell you what the song was. Hey, I haven't said anything else, have you, John? Oh, I left it alone. I left it alone. Matter of fact, I'm just through with it. Amen. <laughs> I might sing the song Sunday, and you'll never know <laughs> what it is. A writer said, a son is a son till he takes him a wife. A daughter is a daughter for all of her life. That's in Irish Proverbs. My daughter is my biggest achievement. She is a little star, and my life has changed so much for the better since she came along. Denise Van Ousting. Every moment I have had with my daughter is precious. Isn't it something? Uh, just one or two more. You've been a blessing from the start. I love you, daughter, with all of my heart. This is from an unknown author, and I think I'll bring it in with, it's your job as a parent to help your daughter identify her purpose, develop her talents, and learn how to get along with people. It's not a high-paying or cushy job, but it is extremely rewarding, and in our opinion, one of the most important jobs you will ever do. Amen. Amen. Mary Ann Richley. Richie. Daughter, there are not enough words to tell you how much I love you. And that is the truth. As a, as a father, I am extremely proud of my daughter and it is my sincere prayer that all of the daughters in the church that the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and that the Lord keep you strong be independent thinkers not independent of scripture see you you develop your thinking patterns through the scriptures you got to think through the lenses of the scripture the scriptures will protect you you forsake the scriptures, you're blind. Now you're left to your own opinion, conjecture. Uh, you, you're on your own. But when you, when, you, when you put the scriptures on, see, the, David said this, when my mother and my father forsake me, 
The Lord will bear me up. When mama and daddy die, David says, I'm not alone because the Lord is still there. So God is the ultimate parent. Amen. Amen. He's our heavenly father. And he guides and he protects. It is the will of God that our daughters be strong. Amen. It is the will of God that they be bright. It is the will of God that they are beautiful. Because in this world, they are trying to give our daughters new identities. And these are identities that don't line up with scripture. Don't let the devil do that to you. But instead insist on standing on the word of God. I would, I want to open the altar. I want the op to open the altar to... Those who will say, Preacher, pray for my house. Pray for my home. Pray for me. Whether you're on the choir, whether you're in the audience, whether you want God to anoint your parenting style, whatever it is you want the Lord to do, what, whatever it is you see, lacking quickly come time is fleeing time is running out quickly come meet me at the altar we're going to ask the Lord to help us ask God to guide us ask the Lord to show us the way show me Lord how to be a good father Forgive me for what I didn't get right. Amen. No parent gets it all right. Amen. No child gets it all right. We all have our successes and our failures. Oh, bless his name. We all do. But God is able to take us wherever we are and to make us better. Amen. Take to bless our children. We want our children to serve our God. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes they go astray. Sometimes they go astray despite your best efforts. You can't blame yourself because they went astray. Amen. Unless you know that you contributed to them going astray. You can blame yourself for that, but you can ask God to forgive you. And the Lord will. The thing about life is you can't go back and undo anything that has been done. But you know what you can do? You can from this day forward make things better. Some of you have been troubled because the marriage didn't make it. The marriage failed. And the devil will always uh, try to throw that up in your face. There's, there, there, there's a young lady, uh, Maddie. That's, uh, she took your place. I was going to stand you up. That, see, see how far along she is? The hide. Those who want to get rid of the Hyde Amendment want to take protections from a baby. That developed. You know we can't go for that. God is able to bless us in our homes. Father, we all stand before you tonight. Here's the, here's the, here's the first thing that we all have in common, Lord. We are all imperfect. We're all flawed. We all have had failures. We've all fallen short. Hallelujah. None of us dare approach you with any trophies in our hands whatsoever. We don't come to you with trophies. We come to you with open hearts. We come to you with our hearts lifted and asking you for direction and asking you for help, and asking for your forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, where we fail as parents. And then, Lord, strengthen us. We thank you in the areas where we got it right. God, help us. We, that was you. That was your grace. Now, Lord, help us to continue to get it right. In the name of Jesus, we can't go back and undo anything that has been done. But, Lord, from this day forward, we can strive to be better dads, 
Strive to be better moms. Strive to be better, better sons. Strive to be better daughters. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us, oh God. And then, Lord, those who are here tonight who have suffered Tamar-like experiences, those who have suffered traumas, those who have suffered abuses, oh God, I pray, oh God, I pray that that experience loses its grip. I pray, oh God, that even though the memory of it may never go away, that it now becomes fuel for them, a, 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 a catalyst, an impetus, a reason to succeed and to do well and to be free. In the name of Jesus, I hear God the Holy Ghost saying that someone needs to forgive. That somebody who wronged you in the past, let that, let that go. Forgive that individual. Holding the grudge only holds you captive. Holding the grudge only keeps you in a place where God don't, will not have you to be. Let that go. In the name of Jesus, thank God that you survived it. Thank God that you've gone on with your life. Thank God that the rest of your days are going to be greater because you're free from that in the name of Jesus. And then, oh God, there are people here on this altar who have been, who have been victims and there were people who have been perpetrators. Lord, you even died for the perpetrator. You died for those who have committed the most heinous of acts. You said where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. So Father, we ask for forgiveness. Father, we ask for strength tonight. Father, strengthen the families in the name of Jesus. Anoint us real good. Hallelujah! My God, let your power prevail. Let the anointing prevail. Strengthen us as never before. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor tonight. We honor you tonight for everything. For everything that you've done. For every door that you've opened. And for every way that you have made. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, for our daughters. Yes, for our sons. Yes, for the families. Yes! My, 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 my. My, my. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Our Father, we let go. We let go. We let go. We release. We release. We let go. We release every trauma. We let, we, 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 we cast down every imagination. We, Satan, we're not, we're, we're, we're hip to your tricks. You're the one who keeps regurgitating and bringing up unpleasantries. And, oh, we, we're hip to you, devil. Next time you bring up my past to me, Satan, I'm going to bring up yours to you. You were in heaven and got kicked out. At least when I get there, they ain't gonna ever put me out. They put you out. Look at your past. Yours is worse than ours. And your future, uh, you don't even have one. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' holy name, thank God. Amen. And amen. Would you worship the Lord? Would you worship the Lord? Glory to God. Glory to God.